I want to uh, give you a tour, okay, uh, in the book of Revelation so that uh, you will see the significance, the importance, because this is part of uh, understanding the book of Revelation. Uh, this is a way to prepare you for the coming king. Okay, you will see a lot of negative things there, but that is not the main focus of this book. Okay, the book of Revelation is the revelation of the coming king of kings. So that, is, that should be, uh, that should uh, give you a, the desire to really study it. Now, now here's the thing. Um, you know, comparing notes with people who are uh, spiritual, or le let's just say uh, 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 people who are in the spirit, you know, th th those who, who are obvious, obviously uh, walking with the Lord, sensitive with what the, what's happening and listening to the Holy Spirit. You see, these brethren of ours, uh, I mean, you know, it is, it's uh, it's amazing to know how uh, it's like uh, we're all in the same frequency, you know. Let's, it's like you're tuned into the same station, okay, radio station, and uh, and so uh, people like that, you know, when we see the same thing shared together uh, on same topic and, uh, you know, receive the same revelation of what's going on. And so that made me change my topic. Okay. So, because, so th that is why I, this week I prepared a topic called the responding to the call. You know, I want to challenge the family to really respond to the call because, uh, you know, as the days go by, the church is falling into deep sleep, you know, it's like uh, no movements at all. And, and, and people are so, I mean, uh, believers are so uh, expecting what? Uh, it's like dreaming <laughs> and not doing anything. Okay, so that's, that's the, the downside of it, you know. So, and then uh, last night, yesterday, I mean, last night when... Uh, when I'm starting to uh, draft my my topic, so in in other words, uh, I'm not going to tackle on the the revelation. I'm not going to give you a tour on the revelation today, nor share about uh, the topic I prepared. I started to prepare the responding to the call, but uh, I want to share to you another topic. It's it's part two of what's next. Okay, if you remember. I did a message entitled, What's Next? Where are we in the signs of the end times? And what will happen next to the church of Christ? You see, uh, in, that, in the scripture that I quoted there, uh, it's a warning to, to Christians, you know, what's going to happen. So that when it happens, we will not be surprised. And at the same time, uh, we will not fall into deception. Um, and then what else? Uh, it's a precaution that uh, there's going to be, a, the, the events is going to cause hurt to the hearts of people. Uh, you just watch it, okay? If, if you have not watched uh, that uh, topic on uh, where are we in the signs of the end times and what will happen next to the church. So this is very important. So the church are prepared. Okay, won't be caught by surprise. Now, today we're going to continue with that series on what's next. This is like an update, you know, after sharing notes with some of our brethren who were called and anointed by the Lord. Uh, actually, not just one, but uh, there are others even in the online, you know. You, 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 uh, I mean, I, I hear them. And see the same things with them in the spirit and in the natural. So it's kind of, it's parallel. You see, we as believers can really not take away or take 
the uh, take biblical prophecies out of out of reality you know we have to uh, consult the bible with what's happening now you see uh, it should always we should always connect things or analyze things or decipher things events with what the bible says said okay prophesied or whatever because you see Everything that is happening now is significant to what the Bible has prophesied already. And so uh, today, uh, we're going to do a part two of what's next. But the subtitle is the things, I mean, things to consider and to pray about or to pray, uh, prepare about, okay, to uh, prepare for. Because there are really things that we need to be aware of. Okay, remember last Sunday, our topic was about a friendly reminder to prepare believers face trying times. And remember, number one, we told you or we want you to be made aware of the events uh, during the days of sorrows or the beginning of birth pains, meaning to say now, okay, nowadays. We want you to be aware of what's going on, okay, in our uh, in our world. <laughs> and so we give you uh, scriptures, and uh, today I I will encourage you again to uh, read and study end time prophecies. Uh, so John, can we uh, show them? Yeah. Study the end time prophecies. Okay, as you can see, we have A, B, C, D. Okay, so these are the scriptures that we want you to read. You know, please give time. I know that a lot of you are very busy, but you see, it's worth your time. Okay, reading this so that, uh, so that uh, the Holy Spirit can use what you read, you know, to enlighten you, to show you things. Because if you do not give time to the Word of God, okay, you might be, or the, the voice of the world might be louder or stronger in your mind and in your heart than the voice of the Holy Spirit, than the voice of God through His Word. So again, you need, we all need to install the, the, the mind of Christ operating system in our hearts, okay? That should be the loudest soundboard, okay? That should be the one who is the governing script in our hearts and minds so that, you see, we, we live a spirit-controlled lives, lives, okay? So... Hallelujah. And uh, for you who attend our church in uh, Victoria Plaza Cinema 4 before the pandemic, I remember it was like 2018 when I mentioned that I am, I, 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 I feel, I, I mean, I could sense the conviction of the Holy Spirit to, to preach on a persecution-ready church. You see, for you who were there, you know, uh, many, several Sundays I've been uh, talking about the persecution-ready church. And then, uh, you know, 2020, <laughs> this thing happened. And then by March 15, 2020, we had to shut down our uh, big meetings. Okay? Uh, and, you know, the rest of the story. So, the thing is... Um, we now see that everything in the end time prophecy is lining up. Not just lining up, but they're lining up very fast. Okay? Uh, they are falling into place speedily. Meaning to say they, it's, it's the, the, the fulfillment are like rapid, you know? They, they, they quickly happen. And uh, it is surprising. It's like, it's unbelievable. <laughs> it's unbelievable. So we're living in times 
where prophecies are becoming becoming a re reality. Okay? So I want you to be aware of that and stop dreaming in your dreamland. You have to do something. You have to act accordingly because time is short. It's even shorter now. That's why those people who are walking in the Spirit, they find it, you know, uh, they, they, they see that the church have, you know, uh, a, a, you know, the window for us to really serve God, you know, is, is now smaller. And uh, we have to act now, friends. D don't just act as though uh, everything will go back to normal soon and things like that, you know. And that is why, uh, you know, a lot of Christians are like, uh, you know, doing church hopping even online. You know why? Because uh, especially if the the, 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 the the preachings of the, the preacher... Uh, does not suit them. Does not. <laughs> okay. I mean, um, you have to be in the spirit and you have to read the word of God. You must ask for spiritual discernment. You know, Lord, where are we now? What's going on? What's happening? Guide us. That's why we're giving you, okay, a, a, a simple, okay, this is just the summary of a study guide so you can be guided, okay, uh, with what's going on, okay? Uh, I believe the Holy Spirit will, you know, once all of the, the revelation the, the is uh, in your heart and uh, the Lord is going to arrange it in a way where you can understand it, okay? Um, I know that uh, uh, reading all of this is overwhelming, but you see, uh, the Holy Spirit, the anointing is with us and the Holy Spirit will teach you, okay? So, okay. Um, now, I just want to make mention also the chronological order of future events on earth, okay? Where are we? What's happening? No, but, but listen, today I'm not going to tackle or I'm not going to touch on the rapture. So when I... Um, when I enumerate to you uh, the, the, the events that, uh, that leads to the, the, the end times or the, the, the events of the end times, okay, the, the, the order of future events, okay, uh, uh, I'm not going to mention about the rapture, okay? Because uh, I understand that um, in the body of Christ, uh, some of you have different opinion and, and uh, position when it comes to the rapture. But let me tell you this. Do I know when the rapture will take place? Okay. The Bible says no one knows. Okay, no one knows. And the Bible says he's going to come when we're not expecting him to come. And also, the Bible says that only the Father knows. That's what the Lord Jesus said, right? Remember, he said, no one knows except his, his Father in heaven. So, meaning to say, it will come, it will happen when the Father says, it's time. Okay, so <laughs> that is uh, safe and that's, uh, that is something, that, that's the, the answer if you want to ask me when the rapture will be. Okay, so let's just say, it will happen when the Father says it's time. But remember, we have a lot of brethren who were expecting that the rapture would come. And they were praying for it too, just like us, okay? I hope the Lord will come. <laughs> I hope the Lord will come after my preaching. <laughs> I hope the Lord will take us now. But God has a plan. So, uh, and the book of Revelation says that there is going to be a delay I will tell you that when uh, uh, I start to uh, unveil to you, I, I start to uh, tour you uh, in, in the book of Revelation. But go going back to this topic, uh, anyway, so here's the, the things, the, the order of uh, future events. You know, I, uh, in Bible prophecies, uh, take, uh, let's say from the Old Testament, it was prophesied by many prophets, okay, 
that there's going to be a re-establishment of the nation of Israel. Okay, so there's going to be a cre creation of Israel be uh, that was uh, that happened on May 14, 19, 1948. Okay, and uh, well, Israel was restored as a nation. Amen. And uh, Philippines was one of those who voted yes for <laughs> in favor of Israel. So, um, and then the thing is that uh, the, the next thing that is expected according to prophecy is that uh, there's going to be an aliyah. Aliyah or the gathering of the Jewish people back to their homeland. Okay, and we know that the scattered people have returned to their homeland. And in fact, uh, even during the pandemic, more and more uh, Jewish people are returning home. Okay, so we can say that uh, another prophecy has been fulfilled. Now, uh, I wrote in my Facebook account, I said that uh, every fulfillment of prophecy takes us closer to the end, okay? Every fulfillment of prophecy takes us closer to the end. That's my revelation when, you know, every time I listen, I, I, I you know, I, I get updates from Amir's brother Amir Sarfati uh, of Behold Israel, you can see how things are lining up. And, uh, and every prophecy... Okay, that is uh, being fulfilled, <laughs> it draws us nearer to the end. Okay, we're already there, <laughs> but we're, we're moving, you know, closer and closer. And that is why um, these things are happening. So, reestablishment of Israel, or the nation of Israel, and then we, 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 we had the Aliyah, and then the, the third main event that is being expected by Jews and Christians alike is the third temple. Whoa! It is the rebuilding of the third temple. Now, but there are events prior to the third temple, you know, like the uh, apostasy and then the revealing of the man of lawlessness. That's why I want to read it to you again. Okay, I'm going to read this so that, okay, uh, uh, Israel was restored, and then there was the, the Aliyah, and now the third temple is coming, okay? But like I said, in between that, uh, the, the, the Aliyah and the third temple, there are other events that will take place, that must take place before the rebuilding of the temple. So this is something that I want to um, give you uh, insight or, or give you, um, what do you call this? I want to give you some points so you have a basis how close are we, okay? All right. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, 1 to 4, it says, Concerning the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and our gather, being gathered to Him, we ask you, brothers and sisters, not to become easily unsettled or alarmed by the teaching alleged, allegedly from us, whether by a prophecy or by the word of mouth or by letter, asserting that the day of the Lord has already come. In verse 3, it says, Don't let anyone deceive you in any way. For that day will not come until the rebellion occurs. In King James, it says, a falling away first. Okay? And the man of lawlessness is revealed. The man doomed to destruction. This is the, the, uh, the man of perdition. Okay? Um, verse 4, he will oppose and exalt himself over everything that is called God, or his worship, so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. Okay, he will take seat in the temple. So there's going to be the th a third temple, right? 
Now, okay. Now, verse 5 says, Don't you remember that when I was with you, I used to tell you these things? Okay? So even the Apostle Paul was teaching them future events. Now, if you ask me, uh, Brother Armand, why are you talking about future events so often? You know, there's not much time. And if uh, there is, uh, the, 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 if it, this is the right time to talk about it. You know why? If Paul was, you know, if Paul taught his disciples around almost 2,000 years ago, you know, if that was needed, how much more today? Okay, so listen. Listen to this. Now we're on verse 5. Don't you remember that when I was with you, I used to tell you these things? What things? And now you know what is holding him back. Who is he referring to? The man of lawlessness. You know, that, uh, you know what is holding him back so that he may be revealed at the proper time. So even the revealing or the appearing of the Antichrist, of the false Messiah, false Savior, it will happen at the proper time. Okay? For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work. Is it? Yes. But the one who now holds it back or the restrainer will continue to do so till he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed. Okay, so when is the lawless one be revealed? When the restrainer is taken out of the way. Meaning to say, the restrainer will no longer block his way, will no longer restrain him from doing his plan. Okay? But this uh, lawless one is the one whom the Lord Jesus will overthrow with the breath of his mouth and destroy by the splendor of his coming. So in reality, behind the scene, okay, behind the curtain, it is really God who is calling the shots, okay? It is not, <coughs> it's, it's, excuse me, it is not the enemy because uh, the one who is really uh, setting uh, the, the, the or orchestrating the events is God. God has a program, but in, in, in the process where, uh, of God uh, orchestrating everything to, 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 uh, so that the prophecies will be fulfilled, you see, in the process, the enemy is also doing his move. In fact, it's like playing chess where the enemy has no move, but... <laughs> He's, he's got only one move every time <laughs> until he is checkmate. So that is the scenario. That is why uh, we don't want anyone, we don't want the children of God to fall into fear. You know why? You know why not? Because God is our Father and He knows how to provide and He knows how to take care of His people and He knows everything about us and he is going to sustain us is going to you know that's the thing okay although there will be a time when god's people will be tried and that is also in bible prophecies but the lord is going to grant us the grace in fact all the questions that you can have in your mind are already answered we have the answers okay in the bible so what we want you to do is that, to understand, is that God determines the timing of events, even the revealing of the Antichrist. So do not fear, oh, who, who, who is here? He could, you know, you know, things like that. Because, you know, God knows who he is, <laughs> okay? And who's behind him? He's actually, the, the evil one, the man of lawlessness, is just a puppet, Okay? You already know about this. And in fact, you don't really need to know who. Okay? My, my concern is that for Christians not to abandon their faith until the end. My, my concern is for Christians to stay loyal, to abide in Christ, no matter what happens. 
okay? To, to keep the faith until you reach your finish line, until you finish the race of faith. That is what matters to me. I am just showing the way to prepare God's people, okay? And that God's people, instead of focusing and, 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 and getting terrified with, 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 with the puppet of the, uh, the evil one, instead of focusing on that part, you need to look beyond it. Okay, you need to look beyond, behind it. Because behind it is that God is setting a trap for the enemy to fall <laughs> to, to, the <laughs> to this, uh, on the pit, okay, until uh, he's done, okay, and he's gonna be thrown away, okay. So, so going back, I know uh, there's another verse I wanna read to you, okay, as uh, in support to, uh, Second Thessalonians 2, with the, the, the scripture, the passage that we just read. Daniel 8.23, it says, In the latter part of the reign, okay, when rebels have become completely wicked, a fierce-looking king, a master of intrigue, will arise. So when is this Antichrist, the fourth beast, when is he going to Arise, show up. When is he going to appear? The Bible says when the rebels have become completely wicked. Now that's Daniel from the Old Testament. Now, the one who wrote Thessalonians, okay, never met with the one who wrote the book of Daniel. But they have same prophecy. You see, it says it's not going to happen until first there's going to be what? Rebellion. Where is that verse? Uh, verse 3, no? It says, Do not be deceived. Uh, do not let anyone deceive you in any way, for that they will not come until the rebellion occurs, okay, or the apostasy, the falling away, and then the man of lawlessness is revealed. The same with Daniel chapter 8, okay? There's going to be a rebellion, okay? But mind you, huh? mind you, remember this. In all of those events the 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 the, the, the biggest uh, part or factor that contributes to rebellion that contributes to uh, betrayals that contributes to hating one another that contributes to to all of those things to, to division in the family you know what contributes to all of the division and the hating and 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 and, and uh what, what did I <laughs> You know what? Division, it's called deception. That's why in Matthew 24, the, the deception was number one. It was mentioned by our Lord Jesus Christ. There's going to be deception, but do not be deceived. And then the Apostle Paul said, do not let anyone deceive you. You know why? Because these things will happen. The advanced party... The factor that is going to cause a lot of people leaving the faith, a lot of people rebelling against God, a lot of people defiant against God. You know, the factor, the, the, the one behind that is the, a driving force that is causing people to turn away from God is what we call deception. And we're... You know, the Bible says the beginning of birth pains, the beginning of uh, the days of sorrows, okay? Number one that you must, you know, remember is deception. We're in, you know, in, we're in the beginning of what? Birth pains. I've been sharing with you what the Lord Jesus Christ mentioned about the events in the uh, days of sorrows, and one of which is deception. So I'm not saying that most people are deceived, but what am I saying? Be, I mean, what am I saying is this. I want you to study the Word of God so you can detect, you can identify which is deception and not. Okay? Because people, 
will there there's going to come a time where people doesn't know how to detect they cannot identify between lies and truth because they lack truth in their hearts and minds you have to equip yourself you have to install the mind of Christ okay that's why when people ask me something and i give my reply it's always i always base my reply my principles from the word of god from the principles taught by the lord jesus christ you know why because i have the mind of christ okay so i no longer speak for myself from myself you know but i want to uh, i want to teach people okay everything that the lord jesus christ taught his disciples as much as i can by grace by 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 god's grace of course so as you can see there is an order all right there is an order we just read it from thessalonians to the book of daniel there's going to be an order before he is revealed why am i why are we why am i sharing this because we are uh trying to discern where are we in the signs of the end times and what's going on so guys um uh, let's continue because in between the apostasy, the falling away, and the appearing of the Antichrist, there is a prelude. You know that. I already mentioned to you some. There's going to be a rebellion, right? There's, uh, uh, yeah. And then uh, it's uh, the prelude, uh, preliminary events for a grand entrance of the man of lawlessness. The man of perdition that is doomed to his destruction. So... There's going to be a grand entrance, okay? Uh, but the grand entrance, okay, there's going to be a what? To be a fall. A spiritual economic decline. Wars. What else did um, uh, Jesus mention in Matthew 24? Uh, there's going to be famine and earthquakes. And what else? Famine, earthquakes, pestilences, like pandemic, Okay? Uh, to condition the world for its need of a savior or a, of a messiah. So if you want to see if there is really a spiritual decline, read verse 3 of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Okay? There's going to be a falling away. That's a spiritual decline right there. So um, going back, uh, so again, let me... Uh, let me uh, reiterate the, the future events that I was trying to uh, build a picture in this message, okay? It's uh, here, number one, there's going to be what? A, the reestablishment of the nation of Israel, 1948. Number two, there's going to be an aliyah, the gathering of the Jewish people back to their homeland. Check. All right. Number three, there's going to be a deception. Okay. And the Lord warn, warns us of deception at the beginning of sorrows. All right. Uh, number four, there's going to be what? An apostasy. Okay. This is what we call uh, people are leaving the faith or uh, they're abandoning their faith. Okay, but like I said, don't let this be you. We are telling you ahead, we're giving you this warning so that you will not be part of them. <laughs> you will not be one of them. I hope, I hope, friends, I hope, please, don't let this be you. You should not be part of those who will betray the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I encourage you to remain loyal. And to remain loyal, I understand, it is only by the power of the Holy Spirit. And you have to feed yourself with the Word of God because the Word of God, the more you read the Word of God, it builds faith in you, not fear. The more you listen to the world, you'll be confused. And it will grow fear in you. So, guys, um, again, uh, creation of, of the state of Israel, Aliyah, deception, apostasy, number five, the restraining is taken out of the way. Okay? Remember verses six to eight? 
uh, of uh, Second Thessalonians. We mentioned about, and now you know what's holding him back so that he may be revealed at the proper time. Because uh, uh, the, the Antichrist is ready to be revealed, but uh, the spirit of the Antichrist is already at work, but he is restrained. Okay? But when the restraining is taken out of the way, then the lawless one, verse 8 says, will be revealed. Okay? So, God is calling the shots. Okay? Um, where are we? So, when the strainer is taken out of the way, then number six, the revealing of the Antichrist. Okay? Once he arrives in the scene, once the Antichrist is revealed, the Jewish people will embrace him. Because he fits the very description of their Messiah. Okay, so we are waiting for the imminent coming of our Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. But they are also waiting for the coming of their Messiah, which we know that we have the same Messiah. But the Messiah that is about to come, okay, that, that they are going to accept is not the Messiah that we are expecting, okay? You know what I mean? Because uh, it's in the Bible. So, listen. So, the restrainer is taken out of the way, number five. Number six, the revealing of the Antichrist. Okay? And then, number seven, the signing or, or, or the, the, the false Messiah will confirm or will establish or will strengthen, according to Brother Amir Sarfati, he is going to strengthen the seven-year peace treaty or peace covenant. Okay, so that's one of the qualifications of their Messiah. He's going to bring about peace, a global peace. Okay, so that, that's, that's what they're waiting for. Now, if you want to study that, that's in Daniel chapter 8 all the way to chapter 9. Okay, I'm not going to read chapter 8 to chapter 9 of the book of Daniel. So that's your homework. Okay, but then, listen up. There's going to be, what? The seven-year peace covenant. But number 8. The red heifer ceremony. What is this? Okay, uh, they said Moses did the first. Of course, uh, we know that from the Bible it was uh, instructed to Abraham, but the, the ceremony that is connected to the, 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 the Mosaic, I think Mosaic uh, uh, Covenant, it's, they said that Moses did the first one, and then the, uh, the eight, uh, red heifer that was uh, offered happened uh, during the second temple time. And then the tenth for the third temple. So uh, the right uh, uh, the, 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 the ash, they, they burned the ash of the red heifer. Okay, the ashes of the red heifer were used in the ritual purification of persons and objects in the temple. And they believe, okay, the Orthodox Jews, that the tenth red heifer bring, will bring in the Messiah. And so, um, and then, after that ceremony, the rebuilding of the third temple. So, okay, so now, before the, red, uh, the rebuilding of the third temple, you see there are events that will take place. But here's the thing, my friend, okay? About the red heifer, we have an update to you, okay? But before that, let me finish. After the rebuilding of the third temple, we know what will happen next, okay? Three and a half years later, there's going to be a betrayal, okay? They will be betrayed by, 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 by the Messiah that they acknowledge, the false Messiah, and then the, the great tribulation. And then 11, number 11, the Zechariah 12 revival. So I believe that the last revival is going to happen back in Israel. It started in the book of Acts and it's going to end there. So Zechariah chapter 12 uh, revival and the return of the king. Okay, so that, that's it. The return of the king, Revelation 1.7. So, through the tribulation, the Jews will recognize the true Messiah. Now, you see, uh, God is going to deal with the sin of Israel once and for all. 
And uh, if you want to read that, I think that's in Daniel chapter 9. Okay? By the way, uh, scriptures. I I'm going to read some scriptures concerning that. But uh, let's read Revelation 1.7. Uh, Zechariah 12. Uh, let's read Zechariah 12 first. I think uh, it was at the last part. <clears throat> Zechariah 12.10, it says, I will pour out on the house of David and inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication. Spirit of grace. They will look on me, the one they have pierced, and they will mourn for him as one who mourns for an only child and grieve bitterly for him as one grieves for his firstborn son. Can you imagine the wailing? And it says in verse 11, On that day, the weeping in Jerusalem will be as great as the weeping of ha Hadad Rimon in the plain of Megiddo. Verse 12, the land will mourn, each clan by itself, with their wives by themselves, the clan of the house of David and their wives, and the clan of the house of Nathan and their wives. Verse 13, the clan of the house of Levi and their wives, the clan of Shimei and their wives, and all the rest of the clans. And their so there's going to be a revival. People will be awakened from their spiritual sleep and they will begin to see that all their ceremonials, the, the rituals that they do year after year was all pointing to the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. That is a time where they are, their eyes will be open. Listen to Romans 11, 25 to uh, 11, 25 to 27, it says, I do not want you to be ignorant of this mystery, brothers and sisters, so that you may not be conceited. Israel has experienced a hardening in part until the full number of Gentiles have come in. So at this very moment, you know, in general, most of the Jewish people cannot see the truth. That's why they don't believe uh, in Jesus. They don't believe in the New Testament. That's why they don't understand that the Messiah that they're about to see, that they're expecting, is not the true Messiah. Because they don't believe in the New Testament, so they do not acknowledge Second Thessalonians. Okay, So now, listen. It says here, Israel has experienced a hardening in part until the full number of Gentiles have come in. So the gospel is, you know, uh, moving uh, around the world and it's going to go back to Israel. And then when it's back to Israel, verse 26, it says, and in this way, all Israel will be saved. Are all Jews saved right now? No, because a lot of Jews do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. But there will come a time when this thing will happen. You see, Israel will be saved. Every clan, they, they will cry out to the one whom they pierce. They, they realize that, oh, that's the real Messiah that, you know, our ancestors crucified a long, long time ago. And so they would, you know, mourn and, and they would weep and, 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 you know, they would cry and, 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 and repent uh, and return to the Lord through Jesus this time. Okay, so it is written the deliverer will come from Zion. He will turn godlessness away from Jacob. Verse 27. And this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. So God is going to put an end to the sin of Israel. That's why there's, God is going to allow this tribulation to happen uh, during the time of the Antichrist, during the time of the false Messiah. Uh, that's why the rebuilding of the temple, of the third temple, is essential. Now listen to this. A lot of Christians doesn't want the third temple rebuilt. You know, I have a problem understanding that. You know why? Because if you believe in God, if you believe God is perfect, you believe, you believe God knows what He's do, doing, and you believe that God is sovereign, He's in control, He's the one orchestrating things, leading to the end, so that God is going to establish an, an ever-increasing and never-ending kingdom. If you believe that, that means... It's going to, 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 to go along or follow the narrative 
uh, that was written in in the in the prophecies of Scripture. Okay, and so if you if you're focused on the agenda, the agenda. Oh, the world has this agenda. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But listen, that agenda was allowed. Remember, there was a restrainer who was restraining for that agenda to come to pass. But if that agenda will uh, manifest to a hundred percent, okay, meaning to say, then hmm, then it is allowed because. Everything has to go through, I mean, everything that God planned, everything that God determined in his, in his heart to happen, will happen. That's why no matter how much effort we, we, we how, you know, even if you give everything you've got, give your best to try to stop unconditional prophecies, you cannot. It's a waste of time, okay? What the Bible prophesied, to happen will happen and what you need to do is wisdom from God on how you can live your life according or how can uh, how will you respond during times like that that is why we have these teachings to prepare you so you know how to prepare your heart emotionally and yourself spiritually and we cannot help you if you do not read your homework, you have to read it. And you say, hey, Brother Armand, I, I, I've read the, 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 the scriptures that you gave us, you know, the assignment, but still I do not understand. Guess what? Read again. And again. And again. Then pray to God, Lord, help me understand. And pray and pray, read, pray, read, pray, read, pray. Until, okay, until you have an understanding. Okay? Um... Okay, so you see that there is going to be a big revival that will happen in the land of Israel. And the clans is going to weep and cry out and call on the one. Now, I want to uh, read the Matthew 23, please. Matthew 23, uh, 39. Matthew 23, 39. Let, let me, uh, is it there? Okay, okay. Wait, wait. Uh, I just uh, need to insert the scriptures here. Save. Okay, Matthew 23, 39 says, For I tell you, this is the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, he said, You will not see me again, Jerusalem. You will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They are going to acknowledge who Yeshua is really is at that time but before they will acknowledge who jesus is there's going to come a time where the antichrist you know will desecrate their temple so it is essential that the third temple will be rebuilt first and oh but 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 the the jewish people will be you know they will be fooled by a bogus uh, messiah yeah but after that, what's going to happen? Okay, we know that, uh, that this uh, false Messiah will betray them and then they're, they, they, they're going to go through pressure. It's like they're going to be in a pressure cooker. <laughs> and the pressure in the pressure cooker will cause them, will awaken them, will lead to their salvation. The doors will be open and there's going to be a revival. Wow, hallelujah. And so, if, if, if uh, you are concerned about the deception that this uh, false Messiah will bring about to Israel, remember, after that, that false Messiah will be thrown out of the window. Okay? He will be thrown out of the window by the real Messiah. So, but before the real Messiah will touch down Mount of Olives, the false Messiah will first enter the third temple, and, you know, first will deceive the world, and then he's going to desecrate the temple, and he's going to, what? He's going to announce, he's going to uh, elevate himself to be God, okay? He's going to take his place at the temple, and he's, you know, he's, he's going to cause a lot of desolation, okay? Uh, what's the verse? 
the abomination that will cause desolation. It is caused by him, by the false messiah. And so instead of this false messiah bringing them through peace, this messiah will end up bringing them catastrophe. It, he will oppress them. And, and they will call on the real messiah. So now they realize this is not the right Messiah. <laughs> but, guys, listen up. Um, so, am I going to... Uh, so, um, when the restrainer is taken out of the way, then the man of perdition appears, and he will establish a seven-year uh, peace covenant, and they will rebuild the temple. And between that, before rebuilding the temple, they need to uh, sanctify, no, no. They need to dedicate. They need to purify the priest, the, the temple utensils, etc., uh, etc. Et How? Through the uh, sacrificial offering of the, uh, through the ashes of the red heifer. Heifer. Sorry, red, red heifer. And, and um, so they're going to do, con the, uh, the, the red heifer ceremony will be conducted for purification so, then that, uh, so that they can officially begin the rebuilding of the third temple. So guys, uh, uh, before the ceremony, uh, 2020 for them, is the beginning of their search for the red heifer. And guess what? Okay, it's in the internet. Guess what? They just found their red heifer in uh, Texas. <laughs> okay, this month, October 2021. Now, we have some pictures. Now, I know that this thing is real. This is not fake news. You know why? Because we know uh, the, the, the person, the one, the, the, the point person whom God used to help the Jews look or search for their red heifer. His name is Sir uh, Byron Stinson. Okay, if you can see, uh, this is Sir Ken <laughs> at the Chris Sandberg. Uh, we were in uh, Jerusalem. And this is uh, Sir Byron. And this is Sir Byron. This is our first day in Israel, and he was the one doing the uh, uh, the tour. He he was our tour guide for the first day, and then balik balik, Sorry. go back. Um, where is it? So uh, uh, so this is uh, Atilibot and Sir Byron. Okay, and uh, as you can see, we're friends. You know, we we still communicate. And he was our sponsor. Uh, he's, uh, he attends the uh, Baptist church there. And he has, you know, he is blessed by the Lord, okay, financially and etc. So, so blessed. And uh, the thing is, uh, uh, I just encourage you to uh, watch the videos, their interview, the etc. They have a website they gave us. Uh, and then, but the thing is this, uh, next picture, please. Um, so this is the red heifer that they found, okay? Now look, I have permission, okay? I have, we have permission to use the pictures, etc. I, I, I asked permission from Sir Byron and he said, yeah, and he gave me additional links. Okay, so this is the red heifer, uh, five, month, five months old. And uh, next picture, uh, do you have the other picture? Yes, right there. So uh, they're going to transport this red heifer, uh, five months old, to Israel. And then at the right time. Now, they, they cannot give uh, the right time, okay, when they, the, 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 uh, the ceremony, okay, the red heifer ceremony, uh, be done, you know why? Okay, from what we discussed, they cannot tell when they will offer this red heifer. You know why? Because 
someone has to appear first. I mean, after the red heifer ceremony is what? The rebuilding of the third temple. Remember this. Ceremony, third temple. Okay, They cannot start to build the, the third temple unless first the red heifer will be sacrificed and that the, the ashes of the red heifer will be used to purify everything in that temple. But again, they are not or they cannot do this unless first there's going to be a treaty. The appearing of the what? The appearing of the man of perdition. <laughs> so, can you imagine how close are we? But we cannot tell. Uh, we're not saying this, that uh, it's very soon. But, but if you look at the Bible, uh, in the Bible, there is a verse that says, let me give you the, the scripture. Um, there's a passage in the Old Testament that can serve and, uh, as a hint for us. And it could be the earliest, if not delayed, okay? The earliest time, uh, Genesis uh, 59 says, So the Lord said to him, to Abraham, Bring me a heifer, a goat, and a ram, each three years old, along with a dove and a young pigeon. So you understand there's uh, three years old, okay? Now, why, I mean, look, Jesus was our perfect sin offering, okay? He died for us. Hallelujah. So, this red heifer thing is actually a, uh, a typi uh, it typifies uh, Christ, who was our ultimate sacrifice. But you see, there is a timeline, okay? And um, if you try to understand, uh, specifically, God required that the heifer, the goat, the ram should be three years old. So if this is five, five months old, <laughs> okay, how many years more before it will reach uh, three years old? Now, that is just a presumption, right? Because that's just, uh, uh, those are just hints from the, 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 uh, that we can find from the Bible. So, uh, we can only uh, uh, presume, assume, we can only, but we cannot tell if it really is the time or the year. Okay? It's like, it's, uh, we can only say what if, what if, what if, but we cannot tell. But the thing is, for sure, Time is short, for sure. Preach the gospel, friends. That's the point. So, guys, having mentioned the five months old and then the, the, the three years old before it's going to be, you know, offered, I'm not saying it will happen in 2024. I'm not saying that, but just a possibility because according to the according to the Jews who were invited during the interview, that they will, uh, they, they're going to do their best, okay, to, to work things out, to process things out, but they cannot tell when. Okay, so you listen to the, to the uh, interview, okay? There, there, there's a link. Uh, anyway, um, Whew. Hallelujah. So again, they will be fooled by the false Messiah who will desecrate the third temple. But through their tribulation, through their sufferings, their eyes will be opened. Okay? They will realize that the one they pierced is the real Messiah. So what is now the point of all of this? Let me lead you to the point. I want to mention again the summary of events described in Matthew 24, 4 to 14. This is just a summary. I'm not going to read the whole passage of Scripture. Just want to uh, reiterate to you. Deception, wars, famines, pestilences, earthquakes. Okay? A persecution, apostasy, betrayal. And uh, people will bite 
the lies and deception because they can no longer detect lies from truth because they are ignorant of the truth. They suppress the truth by what? By not studying scriptures. By not uh, taking heed of uh, what has been written in scriptures. So, now concerning wars, you want an update? Join Behold Israel, okay? Um, uh, watch Amir Sarfati's report or updates concerning the Middle East because there are wars going on that's not being uh, broadcasted in the, uh, in the usual uh, media, okay? Um, and then famines, pestilences, of course, we're in a pandemic right now, so I don't need to explain farther on that. But the thing that you need to uh, be aware of, number three, number six, number eight, you know, there's going to be famines, food shortages. What are you doing right now to prepare? Persecution. How about persecution? How about betrayal that you will be hated by all nations because of Jesus? Okay? So, one word, friends. One word. Okay? Remember the topic, the title of this message is What's Next? Or The Things to Consider and Prepare For. So, these are the things you need to consider. The, the order of events. And we're very near. You know why? Because they found the red heifer. Okay, that's the last, they said, the last ingredient, the last piece, okay, that they need. So they're just waiting for the person, the Messiah, to open the way so that they can start the ceremony and then rebuild their temple. Amazing, right? I mean, who would think, you know, uh, eschatological teachings were not, you know, we don't, really don't mind you know, before the pandemic, but now we're in a pandemic. Now it, it, it matters, you know, end time prophecies matters. So guys, going back, one word for number three, six, and eight is the word suffering. That is the thing that we need to be preparing for. A suffering church, a church that will endure, that is ready, a persecution ready church, because you know, if the Bible says there's going to be persecution, there's going to be, you're going to be hated because of, you know, because you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be hated. It says hated by all nations because of me, because of Yeshua, because of Jesus. So prepare. Because people will betray one another. Famines, you know, there is going to, you know, be uh, food shortages. So, one word, suffering. We should be preparing ourselves. We should be preparing the church to go through tough times. Tough times of suffering. Okay? Suffering is the pursuit of endurance to persevere through unto the end. And trusting that God is in control, uh, that God is in control of our lives through through tough times, through difficult times. So friends, uh, Philippians 3.13, let me read to you Philippians 3, uh, 10. Sorry, verse 10. I want, I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of His resurrection and participation in His sufferings. Becoming like Him in His death. And so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. Now this is a heavy, heavy message. Participation in his suffering. So you see, as, as a believer, you really don't know what will fall on your lap, what will be allowed on your lap. But we know that the Bible says already prophesied those who will end up by the sword. By the sword they will go. And those who will be taken captive to captivity, they will go. Meaning to say, Everything is ordained. You know, the trial that you will face is a trial that is beyond your control. But trust me. Trust God. No, not me. Trust God that, you, you, you know, He will grant you the grace to overcome and He's going to reward you one day because, you know, our 
loyalty and faithfulness somehow will be tried and tested. But that's why before that thing to happen, or if it will happen in our time, if not in our time, so that's it. But if it will happen in our time, at least practice now. Practice the spirit of loyalty in your family, in your personal walk with God, in your devotional life. Practice faithfulness and loyalty in your church, in, in, in the leaders uh, uh, that God ordained over you. I mean, look, everything is connected, okay? Everything, you know, you cannot say, I will be loyal uh, uh, when that happens. No, no, no. If you're not loyal today, you will not be loyal later. It is something that, it, it, is, it is something that is in your system. So, you must prepare yourself now. You know, the spirit of perseverance, the spirit of endurance is something that will grow and develop in us. That's why we, have, we are going through trials right now. And as we go through, if you respond properly, it's going to, uh, it's going to develop in you. It's, it's going to be a positive, you know, the, the negative will produce a positive thing, okay? Uh, the, the pressures will give you a positive, uh, you see, global pressure provides a, an opportunity for the church to grow, okay? Uh, if, if, if you know what I mean, if, I mean, if you can read between the lines, because you see, uh, trials, if we respond according to the ways of the Lord, it will bring us good, it will develop character. That's what the Bible says, right? And endurance and maturity. We just read that, you know. Uh, I don't know what, what the title of that, that, that message, but we just read that to you. We just read to you the passage of Scripture, okay? So, in other words, those negative circumstances will produce in us positive results, okay? But, you know, you have to respond according to what the Bible uh, teaches, Okay, such fiery trials will bring a big change in the church of the Lord. Okay, bringing out the real ones from the fake ones. What do we mean by that? How? You know, in Daniel, we know the characteristics of the fourth kingdom, the characteristics of the fourth beast, which is what? Increasing control and diminishing freedom. Okay, it's like more and more control and less and less liberty. So such trial will cause people to divide and decide whom to follow. That's why uh, in most of our series on loyalty and on uh, what else? Uh, uh, two opposing kingdoms, you know, we, we, we always uh, emphasize to side with God. No matter what happens, you have to choose to side with God, okay? <laughs> and um, hallelujah. So, but, but you know, uh, such trials will really cause people to decide, to, to divide and decide which side to side. <laughs> Some will choose uh, comfort over suffering. Some will play safe, dance to the music to avoid persecutions. To avoid being persecuted by the fourth kingdom, and the fourth kingdom is going to be a global one, remember. Read the book of Daniel again, from chapter 7 all the way to chapter 12, so you will see the whole story, okay? Um, and if you don't understand, okay, uh, it's easier to watch our series on the two opposing kingdoms, okay? All right, so you have an option, either read Daniel chapter 7 to chapter 9 or, or watch the, the two opposing kingdoms, okay? Um, so guys, uh, the persecution-ready church will suffer. Remember, Jesus said there's going to be what? Deception, there's going to be uh, famines, uh, persecution, etc. So the church will really suffer. Jesus said, they will hate you because of me. So people will betray you and hate you because you are a Christian. Okay? You did nothing. Okay? We, we, <laughs> but because we are following the Lord Jesus Christ and not the beast. And so, you know, the focus of the, the false Messiah will be on 
those who follow the Lord Jesus Christ. They will be hated. We will be hated. <laughs> okay? So the church will suffer because the church is willing to go through suffering. Because they choose to par participate in the sufferings of Christ. Because they love God more than their own life, so they are willing to lose everything just for the one who died for them. That is going to be the scenario in the last days. Okay? So, guys, look beyond the present. Hallelujah. These people who are willing to suffer, they, they, they look beyond what's happening. They see what's ahead. They see the future glory, you know, to be counted among those who overcomes the world by faith. You know, to be found faithful and loyal to the true and living God of Israel. Be faithful. Choose to side with God. Okay? So regarding, uh, and anyway, um, Right, right. I, I forgot to mention about uh, the Messiah, okay? Messiah in Judaism, okay? What Orthodox Jews are expecting with their coming Messiah? Uh, these are the qualifications for Messiah according to the, the Orthodox Jews, okay? But remember this, Messiah or Mashiach refers to the future Jewish king, okay? And... Uh, um, uh, Number one, I know, not number one, just take note. Um, they don't believe in Jesus or Yeshua bar Yosef, Jesus, the son of Joseph. As the Messiah, they don't believe that at the moment, okay? But here are the qualifications for their Messiah. Number one, their Messiah is a man. Did I give you that? Oh, yeah. Their Messiah is a man and a king of the earth or a great political leader. So you see, they're expecting a different Messiah. He's a man, Okay. Number two, their Messiah will usher in the era of peace among the nations or will bring world peace, global peace and harmony. Number three, their Messiah will build the third temple in Jerusalem or establish a new temple, a new temple. Number four, their Messiah will reinstitute the Jewish kingdom or establish a new Jewish government. So you see... <laughs> That is why it is not a surprise for us that this false messiah is going to be embra embraced by them. And, uh, and uh, that the third temple will be rebuilt because these are the qualifications for their coming messiah. But that has to happen because what God has determined in his heart, will come to pass. <laughs> okay? So, uh, don't try to, 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 to counter it, to, to, to go against the flow, the rebuilding of the third temple. You know why? Because if you counter it, if you try to go against it, you're going against the plan of God. Because God has allowed it. God has uh, said in his, in his word that it will come, it will happen, it will come to pass. So be it. Okay? So be it. In fact, my, I've been, I always mention that I pray, my prayer is, I pray to God. I said, God, if, if it is possible, please fast forward everything. <laughs> and now it's like, uh, it's really fast forwarding. And uh, that is why the more, the more it uh, burdens me to urge you. To, 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 to beseech you, to, 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 to ask you, serve God, preach the gospel, because our time is short. Work while still day, night is coming, no one can work. Guys, throw out the window the, 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 sh the shame, the fear of man, start sharing your testimony to people. 
start to share your testimony because when this the the anti antichrist starts to rule we can no longer use this platform there's going to be restriction you know we you know if you go you speak against the 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 this um the fourth kingdom and the fourth beast you will be banned <laughs> so now is the time friends to speak of the real messiah tell people who jesus is and what he did in the cross now is the time guys now is the time all right so i told you this i believe this is uh, very important and and um uh, by the way, if you want to know more about the red heifer, read Numbers chapter 19, okay? It's in re, uh, Numbers chapter 19, okay? For the Jews, the red heifer is the key to redemption, okay? And the key to rebuilding the third temple. And the last piece they need for the rebuilding of the third temple. Now they found it. The last piece for the rebuilding of the temple, they found it. What's next? You know what's next. You know what's next. So you see the apostasy, rebellion, the appearing of the lawless man, the lawless one, and then the rebuilding of the temple, etc., etc. But before he will appear, before he will be revealed, the restrainer has to be taken out of the way first. That gives us that should give you the confidence that god is in control okay all right so um uh, so don't worry if uh, if israel will go through a time of uh, a trial of uh, deception and, and they will be fooled by the false messiah who will des desecrate the third temple but through the tribulation, their eyes will be opened and they will realize that the one they pierced is the real deal, is the, is the, is, is the Messiah. And they will call on the name of the Lord. They will say, Baruch haba Hashem Adonai. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And we read that in uh, Revelation uh, Revelation 1 7 it says look he is coming with the clouds and every eye will see him even those who pierced him you see even those who pierced him and all peoples on earth will mourn because of him so you see at this point it's not the Jewish people who will mourn for the Messiah but the whole earth some <laughs> I believe will mourn from because they're terrified, okay? <laughs> because they refuse to believe in Jesus as their Lord and Savior. So when Jesus comes, they want to hide. They want to run away and hide from the face of the one who is seated on the throne. Because they know that judgment, that the wrath of God is upon them. That's why right now, friends, you should be on the right side. You need Jesus in your life. You must, you know, commit your life to Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Okay? Before it's too late. Because if He comes, you know, and, and you're not, you know, and you're not part, you do, and you're, not, you're not part of God's family through Christ, if you refuse the way to life, if you refuse Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you will not see life. But God's wrath will rest on you. Okay? So, better consider that, friends. Better consider that. So, where are we right now? Let me just scan my notes. Aha. Um, uh -huh. So, again... This is my final exhortation and I'm going to end here. Our battle is not against flesh and blood. 
That's what the Apostle Paul said. Our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers and principalities. So it's a spiritual one, not a physical one. So now that our battle is not against flesh and blood, whatever happens in the world, okay, remember this. Whatever happens in the world, it's not our fight. That is not your fight, okay? Our fight is not in the social and political arena, okay? It's not there. <laughs> That's not our fight. So if we have, if our time is short, you know, eh, 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 we don't have enough time to, to, to do more for the glory of God, then don't waste your time in the, you know, in those things. Because our fight is not in the, in the physical and the social and uh, political arena. Our fight, our mission, is the preaching of the gospel of Christ. Our mission is the salvation of the lost. Okay? That is our, you know, Jesus came to seek and save that was lost. And that is now our mission. We were saved. We were made new creation. And now, in Christ, we are ambassadors. Okay? We are the ambassadors of Christ on the earth. Okay? And we are here with a mission. What is our mission? To reconcile the world back to God through Christ. We implore people. We tell people, return to God. Repent from your sins. And believe in the Lord Jesus. Believe in what Jesus did for you. Believe in the mighty redemptive work that Jesus, you know, um, did in Calvary. Because you know what? Without Jesus, there is no salvation. Without Jesus, there is no eternal life. We cannot, uh, no one can obtain eternal life apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. So friends, I challenge you. I challenge you today. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, okay, if you confess that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be safe. You will be safe. And so today, if you have never given your life to Jesus, okay, you, 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 you cannot remember a time when you you know, seriously prayed and committed your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, maybe this is the time. Jesus said in, in John chapter 3, he told Nicodemus, he, Nicodemus was a, a priest in Israel, a member of the Sanhedrin, He's not just an ordinary priest, but the one who is in a level of, uh, a senatorial level in, in, in our uh, case. Okay, the, the, he's equivalent to a senator. At the same time, he's a lawyer. They are to be part of the Sanhedrin. So even though he is uh, one of the top line uh, priests in Israel, the Lord Jesus Christ told him, unless a man be born again, he cannot enter, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And, and he said, the Lord Jesus Christ told him, the priest Nicodemus, the Lord Jesus Christ told Nicodemus in verse 7, do not marvel, do not be surprised that I tell you, you must be born again. So if a priest, okay, if it is necessary for a priest to be born again, how much more with us? Again, this is not a Gentile priest. This is a Jewish priest. And, you know, memorizing the law, the Old Testament, the five books of Moses, you know, uh, is not enough to save him. Jesus said, you must be born again. So if you want to be saved, let me tell you, you must be born again. Who said that? The Savior himself. Yeshua HaMashiach, the Lord Jesus Christ, He is the Savior. He is the one who died for us. He was our sin offering. He rose from the dead. He defeated sin and death. 
He is the resurrection and the life. If you believe in Him, you will be resurrected again at the proper time. Okay? On resurrection day. You will be resurrected. Why? Because you believe that Jesus is the resurrection. Remember Lazarus, he, he, you know, he raised him back to life. Because Jesus is the resurrection and the life. If you believe in Jesus, you will be resurrected one day. Okay? So, you must understand, we all need a Savior. Without Jesus, we are nothing, we are dead. So right now, friends, if you want to become part of God's family, if you want to be in heaven with God one day, I want you to pray after me. I want you to understand, to acknowledge that you're a sinner. The Bible says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Okay? When the Bible says, For all have sinned, and, and the Bible also says, The penalty for sin is death. Eternal death. So, we cannot save ourselves. There is no hope for us without Jesus. The only hope for us is Jesus. And Jesus said, the Savior said, you must be born again. Being born again is not uh, being uh, is not something that uh, you need to uh, sign up and be part of a certain religion. No, being born again is the work of the Holy Spirit. Okay, it's something that uh, you have to uh, that demands response from you. After hearing the gospel, after receiving, listening, hearing, and encountering the truth, okay, it demands response from us. Will you believe? Will you receive Jesus? Will you accept the, the atonement, the, the payment, the substitutionary death that He did on the cross for us? If you do, I want you to pray with me. Okay? Pray with me right now. Or you can read it. Uh, let's uh, pray the sinner's prayer or the prayer of salvation. Okay? Say, Father in heaven. Okay? Pray after say, Father in heaven. I pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. And by the power of your Holy Spirit, I believe that Jesus died in the cross to pay for my sins and that he rose from the dead on the third day. I confess that I am a sinner and I cannot save myself. Forgive my sins and cleanse me with the blood of Jesus. Today, I entrust my life to Jesus as my personal Lord and only Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Friends, if you pray that prayer from your heart, welcome to the family of God. This is just the beginning. The Bible says that the moment you believe you will be sealed. You know, the Holy Spirit is, is placed on you uh, and, and, and you feel that you are a new person, okay? A new creation, that's what the Bible says. The old is past, okay? The old is gone. Behold, new things has come. So, in Christ, you are a new creation and at the same time, you you are uh, we ha we were given the minister of reconciliation okay so we uh, and also this uh, is the time where our journey with the lord begins you see it's it's a it's a journey with the lord the colossians chapter 2 says now that you believe that the, and you receive the lord as your messiah okay now that you, you receive the lord jesus christ as your Messiah continue to live or continue to walk with Him. Amen? So meaning to say, uh, you know, receiving Him is not enough. Receiving Jesus is like, 
entering a door. But you you must not stop at the door. Okay? You must enter in. Since we have the time, we can continue to grow and mature and bear fruit in Christ. Okay? So, once again, remember this, that as long as we are in the hands of the Lord, we are safe and secure. Okay? He who started a good work in us will be faithful to complete it. All right? So, um, once again, uh, thank you for joining us today. We're going to uh, uh, close this uh, online service in prayer. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for those who have given their lives to you. Thank you for your anointing. Lord, release your blessing to your people right now, wherever they are. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord makes His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of His countenance upon you and give you His peace. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion, the fellowship of God the Holy Spirit be with us all. And all of God's people say, Amen and Amen. Thank you so much, friends. See you again next week. Uh, hope you can join us again because every uh, message, okay, every episode, every teaching, every preaching, okay, that we are, that we will uh, broadcast here in our program is going to be relevant uh, and spirit-driven, okay, so so that you will be updated and. Uh, you will be ready for whatever that is about to come okay so you know friends this is a time that we need to develop our relationship with god through his word and through the spirit okay so practice um listening to the to the, to the holy spirit by walking with god and talking to god every single day okay that's my challenge to you and read the scriptures the homework that we gave you please read them because you cannot detach the end time prophecies okay when you try to decipher when uh, you know to, uh, when you try to consider when you try to analyze where are we in the signs of the times where are we right now in Bible prophecies okay you cannot you cannot uh, remove what has been prophesied in the Bible in today's uh, events world events okay so that's it folks God bless you thank you and see you again bye